Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, I want to talk about how you should never be seen as a commodity. All right, so today I want to answer a question from Ku Siuk who asked on uh, episode 148. He said, hi Eric, can you make a video on how to secure a project from clients? I always having tr problem negotiating the price and I'm lacking the skills to promote myself too. Now dealing with clients is one of the things I could talk about, well you guys know, I could talk about this for hours or days or you know, there's so many different aspects we could talk about and it's always something that, that I'm improving on and reading all kinds of different stuff and you know, trying different things out and, uh, and working on different stuff. I mean you have many different aspects of it, you know, finding the clients or having the clients find you, having those first meetings, you know, uh, you know, having the sit down conversations, the negotiation, negotiating the project, you know, specking out the project, doing the project, you know, meeting expectations or managing expectations, all those different aspects we could talk about. But I wanted to talk about the, the most important thing, especially when you, based on what you're saying there about, you know, negotiating and promoting yourself. I think one of the biggest problems that software developers have or you know software development companies or actually this goes to like any self-employed person is trying to make them trying to make themselves different than the commodity that they're seen as. See, one of the problems that we have is that like a lot of times when people are hiring a software developer, they're seeing software development as a commodity where you know and I mean, you and I both know this is not true. Like, no software developer is the same. We're all different. We all have we have different technologies that we use. We have different skill levels. We have different you know years of experience. We have different temperaments. We have different ways that we work. You know, some of us are you know some are very meticulous, and they're just like you know I'm gonna just you know spend time and just do everything perfectly, and everything is, has you know. 100% code coverage with unit tests and some people are just you know slap dash cowboys and there's loads of different levels in between so none of us are the same but to the outsiders we are seen as the same so a commodity let's just say a commodity because I used to work in commodity futures and, and it's like a standard term but just in case you don't know what it is a commodity is something that is undifferentiated from everything else so like if I go to the if I go to the grocery store and I want to buy bananas and I see there's three different brands of bananas right and there's and I can't tell the difference let's say they're all organic right and I can't tell the difference between the three of them right because to me they're just a commodity right they're bananas a banana is a banana right if it's made by Dole or whatever banana company there are right if they're all the same to me I'm gonna go for the cheapest one because you know and if the cheapest one is not there I'll get the, the next one up or you know maybe just because I don't want to feel cheap I'll go from you know one up from the cheapest right so to me they're all the same I know if I was a like, super ultra vegan like and I knew everything about bananas I could tell by the spots on them or whatever I don't you know I would be able to tell what they are and the same as other industries too like to me you know to me because I don't know anything about plumbing you know all plumbers you know are the same so if I'm gonna hire one I just basically go based on the phone book and I'll, I'll just try to find one and I'll try to find one with the best price unless somebody comes to me with, with through a recommendation like somebody recommends hey this guy's really good then that's different then I'm you know I'm willing to pay you know all of a sudden everybody else becomes irrelevant because he's no longer a commodity to me and one of the big problems we have as software developers is that you're seen as a commodity you know depending on your clients that commodity could be you're a Android developer uh, with three years experience or you're just an Android developer or you're an app developer or you're a, uh, you know, a software developer or you're just a guy who knows computers, right? So they, you know, ben, depending on their skill level, they, they're looking for different things and you have to manage that. And one of the things, so depending on what, on what they're looking for, like say, say if they're looking for an Android developer, you know, you, what you want to make sure is that you're not a commodity a Android developer. So they could come to you and you know, they're going to hire an Android developer, but they could just go to the next guy, right? Or the, or the next guy or the next guy, right? So what you have to do, and this is, it's not as easy as it, as it might sound, but there's so many easy ways to, to get around this, right? When you, when you meet with them, you have to you know, sell a lot of different things about it. First of all, yeah, and you have to think about what they're looking for, right? So like if somebody's hiring a software developer or if they're hiring you to, to do their mobile app, they have their app idea and that's what they're concerned with. They don't care how many years of, of training you've had or whatever. They might be interested in your portfolio and what you've done before, how many successful projects you've had, all that kind of stuff. But there's other things you could sell yourself on too, right? Say, like for me, one of the big things that I always do when, when I'm talking with a client is 
I try to emphasize well, I try, I try to emphasize a lot of the unique things about me, like, you know, uh, it could, and years of experience is okay, but it's like everybody has a certain number of years of experience. And, and we both know that someone with 10 years experience is not necessarily better than someone with eight years experience and someone with two years experience, not necessarily one year's experience. It's just, they don't know what to go from, so they go, go based on that, right? So, so I'll talk about, you know, the, the, the amount of, you know, some of the places I've worked before, some of the successful projects I've had, you know, some of the, uh, some of the things I might think are relevant. I might talk about blog posts that I've done or, you know, GitHub uh, submissions or, uh, you know, the, the video, you know, we talk about the video, we talk about the, the different types of stuff. So you're active in the community. That way you're, you're different than a lot of the other people. You're kind of, you know, they, they may have found you because they were looking for a commodity, but you've distinguished yourself from a commodity. And it, they don't have that impression that they could just, you know, if you, if you don't go to the right price, they'll just move on to somebody else because you start to, to build, you start to sell that stuff there too, right? Uh, and also the, the level of excitement. This is something that I, I find the most, well, a lot of software developers just seem to completely miss. And same, not just software developers, like mechanic, like if you go to a mechanic and they, you know, to fix your car, the first thing they do is, go, ooh, I don't know, right? There's no, you know, there's no enthusiasm to, to fix my car, but you know, that's kind of different. If somebody's, if somebody wants an app, right, they're really, really excited about the app. They really want that done. And the best thing you can do is try to mirror their excitement. So if somebody says, hey man, I got this great idea. I'm really looking for a good developer. You know, you could say, yeah, okay. Yeah, tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I could do it. It's going to cost this much. Or you could say, Hey man, that's awesome. Let, let, you know, oh really? Oh, you, wow, you thought of that? No, yeah. Hey man, you know what? I'd love to work on this. This is how much it's going to cost. And when, when they say, "Ooh, that's a bit expensive," he's like, "Oh yeah, man, I know. You know, it, it'd be a shame if it doesn't work out, right?" And of course, when it comes to negotiation, the best thing you could do when negotiating, when negotiating, is being able to walk away. So you set a price, and uh, and you could work with that price, but you always have to be able, be willing to walk away, which means you have to have more than just one client you have to have more than one prospect you know it's you know if it's if it's a decision between either i do this at a price that i that i'm not happy with or i don't work at all then you're going to you're going to take the price you're not happy with but if you have several prospects lined up in your pipeline that that makes things a lot easier but this is something that i would when i was a contractor i thought about this a lot i thought about you know as more software as more companies were outsourcing to India or China or you know the Philippines I started to think of myself as how do I differentiate myself as a software developer how do I how do I prevent myself from being a commodity right and it's not you know like I said there's no such thing as a software developer commodity but their perception is that we're a commodity and one of the big key things you have to do when you're talking to clients is to is to stand out from the commodity uh, skills. So, you know, there's, there's tons of other app developers out there and then there's Overpass or there's, t you know, there's t t tons of other Android or iOS developers out there and then there's you. You know, you share their excitement, you have the experience, you know, you, you, you completely get where they're coming from. And if you do that, you know, things are a lot easier. And, and even if your price is a little bit high for them, they're gonna accept that because they feel more comfortable like, like the risk is lower. Like you, that's another thing you're doing is you're trying to, trying to appreciate the fact that they're taking a big risk in, in hiring somebody. They don't know if they're gonna be good or bad or they, you know, they don't wanna spend a lot of money and just think that everything's gonna fall apart. So if you could tell them that, hey man, we're, we always successfully release projects. We release on time. If you could give them a testimonial, that would be great. But if you're just starting out and you can't, you just have to, you know, you could point to different projects that you've done, different types of levels of experience that you've had, you know, all this kind of stuff. I mean, there are people out there, you know, you, you wouldn't believe how often I hear people, you know, clients call me up and they're saying, you know, Eric, we just can't seem to find anybody who's good. Everybody seems to be either really technical or they, you know, or they just, you know, they just don't seem to, to get it and there's just not somebody I can talk to. And a lot of that is just, you know, being that guy, right? If I, when I'm interviewing somebody, I'm sorry to keep going on about this, but like, you know, when I'm interviewing somebody like for a job, like, you know, if I'm hiring a bunch of people and everybody's the same, I go for the cheapest, right? And, um, you know, and if they, if they don't have anything, if they don't have any portfolio of, of existing work or they don't have any portfolio of existing, you know, documentation, you know, it could be, it could be a blog, it could be blog posts. 
it could be GitHub submissions, it could be you know lots of things. You know, in today's world, it's so easy to publicly, you know, demonstrate your skills that you know it's it's amazing to me that more people don't do it. You know, and it's and you also what you have on your, to your advantage is a lot of software developers just don't see the importance of it. They you know they they look at the the, the black and white, the technical side of things, they look at their skills, but they don't think, how can they market their skills? Because you know what, your skills aren't as important as how your skills appear to be to your, um, to your clients. So anyway, I hope that helps a little bit, right? You, when you go into, into those kind of situations, whether it's a job interview or you're looking for a contract or you're looking for a new client, that is a sales conversation. You are trying to sell yourself, right? And it's not, you know, your skills are not nearly as important at, at that stage, you know, during the project, yeah, they are. But at that stage, your skills are not nearly as important as how your skill, your, how your skills appear to be to them. Not just your skills, but your attitude and your, your ability to, to, to realize their dream. Anyway, I hope that, I hope that helps a little bit. That's it for today. I'll talk to you guys on Monday.